Oh, can someone just let me know if you can see it, everything's okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Um, you remember those questions that I said were really good questions? I sent you the memo up to a certain point. And I know that you said, where's the last question? Um, I didn't give it to you because I thought, let me rather just show it to you first. All right. So let me just get my board pens. Uh, here they are. They're all running out of bit of ink, but um, I'll get more ink tomorrow. Um, the, the one I didn't show you was this one. Am I right? Did I give you this one? Just, you could tell me, I'm sure I wrote it up to this one. Two minus third seven over two to the half dot two plus third seven over two to the half. Was that the last yeah, one I said? Same. Was that where I got up to, uh, hello? I just want one person to tell me. When I sent you this page the first time, is that where I got, was that the last question you're talking about? Um, okay, I need, I need someone to just ask me yes or no. You remember getting this worksheet? Yes, ma'am. All right, anyway, I'm gonna do this, this one. So I want you to watch. Whether I did it or not, watch this question. It's a good one. Um, let's see what color works the best. Okay, what does this mean? This means if this is the square root, a fractional exponent is remember the square root. So this is the square root of 2 minus third 7 over 2 times... So this also means the square root. Remember, you can write fraction exponents. Remember, that's a bracket. It's the exponent of one, and that's your square root. So if you divide the exponents, you get the fraction exponent. Okay. Now these are what we refer to as thirds. Now we haven't done much on thirds, but I did send you my note that says things like, if you have the exact same third, like that, uh, that means you've got one apple, look, one apple plus five of the same apples, it's six apples, okay? So you can add like thirds. Remember, you can subtract like thirds, okay? So that would be three bananas minus one banana, which is, two of those things. And the other rule is if you get like sort of square root three, dot, which means times, square root two, as long as they're the same thirds, you can multiply under one root. That's a very important rule. If it was the square root of two times the cube root of three, then you can't put that under one root and times them because those thirds are not the same. So as long as the third value is the same, but they are unlike thirds, you couldn't add. I mean, if I said, what is third three plus third two, it's like we say, what is A plus B? You can't add that, you can't add that, but you can times them. So that is the same as the square root of six, right? Now I'm gonna keep that rule there for a second, just get rid of all the other mess, because that's the rule that I'm gonna use, because, and my matrix, by the way, last year, I can't remember if it was their prelims or finals. Can't remember, I think prelims, prelims. Got a question just like this. So you have to know that if you get more than one term inside any radical, remember we refer to these also as radicals, inside the radicand, the value, the expression inside is one term. So there's a bracket there and there would be a bracket there. All right. So using 
this rule, because they're both square roots, okay, remember if you don't see a number there, we know it's a square root. That is when we know to under one radical, we can multiply. Now these are not the same bases. Look carefully. This is two minus third set of two. This is two plus third set of two. So they're actually not the same. But so it's like a three times a two, they're not the same, but I can multiply them under one radical. Okay, so now I'm gonna rub, that is a dot meaning times. So I'm gonna now wrap out the rules so I can actually finish this question. Okay, so let me finish it. Guys, um, these are what my pens look like when you buy them new. They're very expensive. Ouch. Um, my, my, I have to actually use it because there's no ink in my other pens. So now, put that in the dustbin. I normally take that off because it just looks ugly. Well, now I've made it look ugly, but there's my magnetic holder. So that is how Mrs. Holmberg does things. You can buy those at CNA. But as I say, they're not cheap. Right, so now I've got nice new pens. So here I've got two minus third seven over two times two plus third seven over two. Now I hope you can see this now becomes foil. You've got a binomial times a binomial. But guys, this is that special case. It's the conjugate. Remember, conjugate just means a binomial where you change the middle sign to the opposite sign. So if you got, let's do something easy. If I gave you A plus B multiplied by its conjugate A minus B, then you'd get A squared minus AB, but then plus AB. So that would negate and cancel out and you'd get the minus b squared. So you get a squared minus b squared, which if I gave you that, we would say, if I said factorize, then you would factorize, and that's like the difference of two squares, right? So do you see, because they're exactly the same with the middle term, then when you, when you um, do the FOIL, you know that you just square the first term, this middle funny looking term's gonna cancel out, Minus times plus is minus, and then you just take your last term and square it. Now, I will do it like this just so I don't lose anyone. Seven over two, but we're still going to actually square that. So I'm going to move here. So that means you've got four minus. Now, when you square a square root, do we agree it disappears? All right, it negates because it's a square root. And if you square it, you just get the seven. But remember, you've got to shower the power. So in other words, you've got to also square the bottom, which is four. Now, that doesn't look very pretty. I suggest, should we LCD it? Remember, it's an expression, so you can't drop the denominator. And let's see if we can get a better looking numerator. So one divided into four goes four. 4 times 4 is 16, minus 4 divided into itself goes once, 1 times 7 is 7. Now, 16 minus 7 would be 9 over 4. Now, we have a fraction, and remember, if you have the square root or any root of a fraction, it's the same as saying the numerator rooted over the denominator rooted. That's what it means. So your final answer, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. So what looked like such a scary, horrible question actually became quite fun. Now, I'm, I know that I'm writing it out a bit bad again, but I, can't, I don't know if you can see the bottom of the board. Oh, you actually can, okay? But anyway, so do you understand it went line one, line two, line three, line four, line five, line six, line seven. Okay, that would have been considered a level. Uh, let me just think. I'd say level two, but hard. You see, when we gave the matrix, 
the matrix, I think it was last year in the prelim. We didn't give the question like that. We gave the question, that was the question. And you see, a lot of the kids couldn't do it at all because they didn't know the rule that if you have different certs but under the same radical, they didn't know that you could multiply them under one radical. And because they did not know that rule, that is why half the matrix got naught for that question. It was out of four, all right? It was out of four. But remember, they started here where I made it even harder because I, I made it a fraction exponent of a half, which means you had to know that that means that. So, yeah, I like that question. If you, if you know how to screenshot and you want to take the notes, but I will send you the memo so you don't even have to worry. The next question I want to give you, you will enjoy it, and I'll tell you why. Um, because it's a simultaneous equation, do you remember that's where you get two equations uh, with two variables and you've got to solve them simultaneously. But what I like, and this is very grade 11, you can almost bet your bottom dollar you're gonna get something like this, is what you normally get is your one equation, you know, is like you used to, it's, look, it's the quadratic one. Are you with Um, uh, don't worry about it. But you that's not a straight line. Don't copy the norm. Um, one, they will. It's a soul and one. I don't know if I. Let's hope that's right. Now remember in term one, your other equation was like 2x plus y equals to one. And you had to always start with the linear equation, you remember, and make the, the coefficient of the variable that had the one, make that the subject. And then do you remember, then wherever you had the y here, you had to subject not the second equation. The second equation plus y equals two to the y plus four. Okay, it's a six mark question. Now, if you've never seen this before, it could look scary. But if you've seen it before, it's not that bad. You want to see that the variable exponents in this equation are linear first degree. And I think this is the equation, but I can see that if I get the bases the same, which is going to be easy, then I can equate the exponents. So let's not brush it. Degree 4 is 2 squared of x plus 1. I'd like you to think of that like also in a bracket. And that equals the exponent is the expression x plus 4. Because you see here, you raise it to an exponent, you have to multiply. But if the exponent here is to turn, distribute, multiply. So in other words, we're going to get the base 2. Do we all agree that will become to the 2x plus to the 2y? And that equals 2 to the y So the rule is you can equate your exponents. So 2x 
2y equals y plus o. Are there any like terms there that we can collect? Yes. So let's do it. Did you see there's a, a y and a y? So let's see. We've got 2x. Okay. Um, should we bring it to this side? Plus 3y equals... Now, if yeah. I've done this... Isn't y going to become negative yeah. when you take it over? Yeah. That's right. Am I right? Yes. Am I right? That's right. Okay. Deliberate error to see if you were listening. But well, well, well spotted. So now that is the linear equation. So now which variable do you want to make the subject of the equation? You want to make the variable that has the ghost one. Has the ghost one. Do you see that? So you're going to make y equals the four on the right stays four, but the positive x will become negative two x. So now, wherever you see y, and there is my y, you are going to replace it with that bracket. And now solve for x. Do you understand? Now I'm going to give you three minutes to finish this. Okay? Three minutes for you to finish this because we did this in term one. So I started it for you. I started with the exponential equation to get equation continue here so now we're going to substitute let's just say sub <laughs> into the other equation I'll just do it first line and nothing more so, uh, because I know my students get very cross when I say I'm giving you five minutes and then I don't, but you would go 2x squared minus 3 times y. But y equals, in a bracket, to two, 4 minus 2x, and it equals 2 minus 4. So you can see now, how you can finish this, okay? I'll give you a still three minutes and I'll shut up. <laughs> so you have two and a half minutes left. Right, let's say you've got 50 seconds left. And remember, and why. Okay, um, is it okay if I do it now? Or does anyone want to say, just give me one more minute? Just, um, 
Shout out if you want me to give you a little bit more time or I'm going to do it. Okay, then I'm going to do it. Right. You've got to take this, distribute it in to get rid of the bracket. So we've got 2x squared minus 4x plus 6x squared plus 4 equals 0. Let's just check that. Minus 12. I said 12 and I wrote 4. Minus 12x. No, minus 12x plus 4. So that is a 6. <laughs> Sorry, for a minute I thought I went dyslexic. <laughs> okay. Um, plus 6x squared. Okay, so now add your like terms. So 8 x squared minus 12x plus 4. Now, do you agree? Don't try and factorize that yet. You can take out a highest common factor of 4. It will make your life very easy. So if you take out 4, we'll have 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Then if you divide both sides by 4, do you see you get rid of the 4? Do you see that? And 0 over 4 is still 0. So the 4, it, I always say to my class, it looks like it just magically, I took out that 4 and it just magically disappeared. Okay? But I think you've learned something. And what you've learned so far is actually, I don't think there's real magic. Magic is normally a trick. Or in maths, there's certainly a rule. Okay? But we used to say in class, and it brings back memories, oh, I miss you guys. In my class, do you remember, we used to say, Harry Potter, Expelliarmus, and then, Pew! okay, we always brought that in, okay, my magic one. Uh, yeah, that was such fun. Okay, I'm going to leave that equation. I'm just giving myself space. All right. So now, if I may, I want to continue. Okay, that I can take away. So now I'm going to continue this here on my next page. All right. We need to factorize this. The factors of 2 and 1 to add up to 3, this is very easy to factorize. But just when you are very excited because it's so easy, please do not drop your equation in the process of your excitement. Okay. So it's going to be 2x and 1x. One and one, same signs, guys. Same signs, both the first sign. You can always foil this and check it and to see that you've done it correctly. We have two factors now, equals to naught. So either this factor is naught or this factor is naught, which means my answer is for x. I get x is positive a half from this factor. Or from the factor above, I'm going to get x equals to 1. Now we've solved for x. Put your arrows there. But don't stop there because it's x and y. Now, you sub this back into always the linear equation. Now that's, I'm laughing at myself because I wrapped that one out. But out of memory, the linear, oh, there it is still. Yo, for a minute I thought I wrapped it up. Do you remember y equals to four minus two x? That is the linear equation. So you take each x value, your root there, and you always sub it back into the x in the linear, not into the quadratic, okay? So, I always say, if x, let's say, equals to a half, therefore y will equals 4 minus 2 times a half. And I don't even need a Casio, because 2 divides into itself once, 2 divides there 1. So, y is 4 minus 1. That's 1. So, y would be 3. And don't forget that or... Or, okay, now I've underlined it so much, I don't have enough space. So, it's just, I think, I think you got the point. Or, if 
x equals to 1, therefore y would equals to 4 minus 2 times, replace the x with 1, and we'll get y equals to 4 minus 2, which means y equals to 2. Now, they will accept it if you leave your answers like that, totally. If you solve them for x and y, and you want to write your answers as coordinates, you can, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's where the two graphs intersect. But I'm going to say that unless they specify, don't. But I do want to say to you, please just take note. I've put an arrow, and if you want to put as many ors as you like, but I've put an arrow under what my, what my examiner needs to see. So, you know, this would be like quite a lot of writing, probably almost an A4 for six marks. Um, and remember, the teachers look from the bottom up. So I'd say, okay, that's correct, that's correct. Then I'd just say, no, they didn't drop their equation. Did they show all the steps? And six out of six, I can mark that in 30 seconds. But some of you, you see, you write as messily as me. You're also all over the place, which I have an excuse. I have a very small whiteboard. You have no excuses. You could turn to another page. But sometimes, like, we can't find your answers because we, oh, where's the answer? <laughs> so always try and get a habit to put an arrow under your answer. It's just kind of what maths teachers do. And I don't know why we do it but we do enjoy doing it. Now, I just see something. Uh, we still got... Um... Uh, I, I'm more than certain I am right, so I'm gonna carry on. Um, that was a lovely question. Now, I'm going to now give you a really, really hard question. <laughs> now, I said it's hard, so I've sniped you. I'll explain what that means. The fact that the teacher said the question's hard, um, it's sniped, sniped. I have subjected you to the negative influence of other people, okay? So I think we'll make that square. <laughs> I have subjected you to, well, what does that N stand for? Um, oh yeah, I've subjected you to the negative influence of other people. So you see, you are now gonna immediately find the next question hard, because I said it's hard. But it's only out of four marks. And I bet you, every one of you can get at least one out of four, which is 20%, right, 25%. And I think some of you can get definitely two out of four, which is 50%. And of course, there'll be some who get it almost three out of four. And I know there'll be someone who gets four out of four, okay? But copy the question down, and I'm going to let you try it first. All right. So... I didn't mean to sly up you. Um, what I should have said is the next question is going to be fun. <laughs> but my students already know when I say that, they're suspicious and say, oh, you mean hard. And then I say, no, fun. Really, it's fun. Anyway, I think it is fun. But um, yeah, let's see if you can do it. This is the question. A question like this appeared in one of our metric finals. It might have been this exact question or similar, can't remember, um, but it wasn't last year. It could have been the year before the year before. So you see, it gets tested. And it was like this. It said, oh, wait, I left the question out, um, but I'm sure I can find the question by the memo. Hold on. One second. I remember I wrote down half of it, not the full thing. Wrote, okay, here's the question. Okay, so now you're all watching. Okay, so this is, it's a level four question. It's a level four because it's a bit of problem solving. But remember, 
You can always pick at it, like a vulture picking at a carcass. You can pick out marks. So they said, if five to the exponent of 10x equals to 1,600, and two to the exponent of the square root of y equals to 25, the question then said, determine the value of 5 to the x minus 1. Um, that was in a bracket, raised to the exponent of 5 over 4 to the negative square root of y. Four marks. Determine the value of. It's going to be the numerical value. Which means they could have said also, they could have said, evaluate okay if, because your answer is going to be an, all right then there it is you can see the minus i'll give you um we don't have, okay i think our lesson ends in one minute so i'm going to let you puzzle over that and i will then send a step-for-step -step memo this afternoon before you go to bed so that you can sleep because I know a lot of you will not sleep till you know what that answer is okay <laughs> so I want to see out of four can you get one can you get at least two maybe three or four all right so guys I'll see you on Monday this Monday normal time and Tuesday, also normal time. Wednesday, we will change the time. So I'll see you Monday, normal time, I think. Unless I put an announcement on the group. I've just got to look at my matric timetable again. Because remember, I'm teaching matrix. So lamb chops, unless I send a message to change that, I'll see you normal time Monday. Bye.